new dancing director, I am so happy to be here. As we begin our festivities tonight, I'd like to take a moment to welcome and honor 12 true Golden Hawks who are joining us this evening from the class of 1968 and who are processing in before our graduates.
gives our class great joy to know that so many of you have come tonight to pray with us and ask God for his continued blessings on us. Thank you to our parents, family, faculty, and friends for your love and support as well as your guidance and patience over the years. It is fitting that we begin our final celebration together as a class with this baccalaureate mass. As we have experienced here at Bethlehem Catholic, God has always been at the center of our lives and our school community. Without God, the successes we have achieved and the challenges we have faced could not have occurred. Tonight, we rejoice with our family and friends with the goodness of our Lord. Please all stand and join in our entrance procession song, O God Beyond All Praising. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the martyr and St. Boniface be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed in his blood, and confidently profess it by our deeds. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, wait for and hasten the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames, and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace, and consider the patience of our Lord as salvation. Therefore, beloved, since you are forewarned, be on your guard not to be led into the error of the unprincipled, and to fall from your own stability, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and to the day of eternity. Amen. The word of the Lord.
worth the mark. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing her hypocrisy, he said to them, why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one to him, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to everyone. Welcome especially uh, to the priests who are with us, um, some of your pastors and other priests. And, um, special welcome to Father Vince Free, who's uh, the uncle of Michelle Rule, um, Deacon Scrack uh, from St. Nancy's with us, so welcome to everyone. I'm just finishing my second year here, and I teach freshmen, so unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I never had any of these students in the classroom. And that puts me at a bit of a disadvantage because I find the classroom is where I, I really get to know everybody. But recently, I did get to have one class with all of these seniors, half of you in uh, Mr. McGorry's classes. We talked about uh, the priesthood and uh, the other half in Mr. Goel's classes talking about marriage. And that, was a load of fun. So tonight we'll have one more class. Is everybody good? Wow, field enthusiasm. You think it were graduation or something. <laughs> so um, in our gospel reading, we hear the famous line from Jesus, repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Now, before we look at those words, context, um, we're told quite explicitly that the Pharisees are trying to ensnare Jesus in his speech. Um, so the Pharisees, unlike, unlike Becca's students who only ask questions in class with the purest of intentions, the Pharisees are only asking this question to try to get Jesus in trouble. So, first question. Who are the Pharisees? The Pharisees are a sect of Judaism known for what? <laughs> sect of Judaism known for, go. Uh, yeah, well, lots of people expected in this. No, no, don't laugh, that was a good, that was a good attempt. Um, a lot of people were expecting Messiah, but what, what was distinctive about the Pharisees? Um, what do we hear about the Pharisees in the Gospels? What, what were they known for? He may. You know this. <laughs> we're being live streamed. There's a million people watching right now. <laughs> Yes, the Pharisees, the Pharisees were known for being very, very strict about wanting to observe God's law. Okay, so um, for, for the Pharisees, God's law was of utmost importance. Exactly the way it was written, you had to observe that right down to, uh, to the letter. So the Pharisees are asking Jesus, basically what they're asking is, is it right to pay taxes to the Roman emperor or not? Okay, now. What does Jesus say? Now, before he says, repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, what's the first thing he says? 
He asked them to do what? Joe. Bingo. Yes, he says, bring me a denarius to look at. Okay, so somebody in this group gets out a Roman coin with the emperor's picture on it so Jesus can use it as an illustration. Jesus just exposed their hypocrisy. Because these people who claim to be so good at keeping the law are carrying around Roman money, which the Jewish people considered idolatrous because it had the emperor's picture. And the Romans worshipped the emperor as a god. So Jesus is talking to people who are being very hypocritical, people who are only trying to trip him up, people who are not really interested in the truth of the matter. So he knows that whatever he says is going to fall on deaf ears. So he's not going to waste a lot of time expounding on this issue. So again, the question is, is it right to pay taxes to Rome? Now, why is this a trap? Because if Jesus says, no, we are God's chosen people, so we should refuse to give anything to Rome, what will the Pharisees do if Jesus says no? Not a trick question. <laughs> Is that Evan? Go. Okay. So, so yeah, basically they, they try to get him in trouble with the Roman authorities, right? That Jesus is, is a threat. Okay. That's basically the, the idea. But now, if Jesus says, yes, you know, we really should pay taxes to Rome, how would they spin that response? Who's the no <laughs> I'm going to pay for this. <laughs> so if, if, the, if Jesus says, yes, we really should pay taxes to Rome, the Pharisees would basically... Get him in trouble by Okay. Yeah, so so exactly. So in other words, it's 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 a loose loose type of a of a situation now. But then of course Jesus responds with, with the famous words from give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Now, is this simply an evasive answer meant to keep him out of trouble? Well, may that, that might be part of it, because again, context, look who he's talking to. But the reason we remember these words today is that um, there is a timeless lesson in them. And it's a lesson that's very appropriate for people about to graduate and go out into the wider world. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Okay, we have a responsibility to the world that we live in. The follower of Jesus Christ is not someone who uh, sort of stands apart from the society around us. Um, a follower of Jesus can't just refuse to participate in the things of this world as he or she tries to live a life oriented toward heaven. But it's really quite the opposite. Our path to heaven is how we live in this world right now, what we contribute to the, to the good of this world right now. So you keep that in mind. As you, as you study your chosen field in college, and you choose a career path, uh, hopefully it's not something you're doing just purely for yourself, but you want to contribute to the good of the world around us in one way or another. So that's, that's part of giving Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Um, sharing responsibility for your society, participating, contributing to the common good. But I dare say, a lot of people forget about the rest of what Jesus says. Give to, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. And this is perhaps the part of the lesson that Jesus left unsaid. God and Caesar are not of equal status. Jesus is not saying we should just kind of give half of our lives to this world and only half to God, as though we can live two lives or we can live by two different sets of values. Hopefully that part of the lesson is obvious enough to us that Jesus can safely leave it unsaid. As you go out into this world, you have to be careful that you are truly giving God what is his. 
and you are not letting Caesar overstep his bounds. And with that in mind, we, we recently talked in class about our vocations in life, right? marriage and uh, the priesthood and the religious life. Tonight, as you graduate, and knowing this is really the last opportunity I'll have to speak to you, I want to apply this just to one more critical dimension of our lives. Donuts. Okay, now listen, see, life, life is like me stopping at Dunkin' Donuts on the way to school, okay? So, people know I'm addicted to coffee, so they, they give me gift cards, okay? Now, the problem is I never go out for coffee, that's what the Keurig is for. So, after a while, I've got this accumulation of gift cards. So, a few months ago, I thought to myself, okay, well, people gave me these gift cards, and it, I can't just let them go to waste. And there is a Dunkin' Donuts on the way to school. So a couple mornings a week, there you have it. Now, the goal was to spend the gift cards. You might like a Dunkin' Donuts gift card to a denarius with Caesar's picture on it. And, you know, funny thing, I used up all those gift cards a long time ago, yet I'm still shelling out money a couple mornings a week at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and furthermore, the novelty has long since worn off. Yet, there I am still stopping a couple mornings a week on the way to school, simply part of my Becca routine. Point being one, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but be careful, because Caesar has a way of overstepping his bounds. Participate in the society that you live in, but be careful. The world, the society, the culture you live in, has a way of drawing you in, often in ways that are very subtle and very gradual, until your life is being shaped and molded more by society than by your identity as a follower of Christ. A couple weeks ago, I walk into Dunkin' Donuts, and the Dunkin' Donut lady sees me coming and starts putting a Boston cream in the bag. And I didn't even, like, you know, like I didn't even say anything, and I didn't even decide that's what I wanted. You know, once it was in the bag, I thought, well, okay, whatever, it's all good. So, you know, like, be careful when you deal with Caesar, because the emperors of Rome were dictators. And today, in 21st century America, a lot of people allow this culture to become a dictator over their lives. Now, I chose donuts as an example, because donuts are a good thing, right? No, the donuts reflect God. They do, because like their divine creator, they are without beginning or end, and they're all good. <laughs> but think about it. If the course of one's life can so significantly be altered by a, a few Dunkin' Donuts gift cards, imagine what could happen when it's a question of things, choices, behaviors, lifestyles, beliefs, attitudes, and opinions that are not rooted in truth or goodness. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but be careful. Give to God what belongs to God. That first reading we heard uh, tonight from St. Peter has a great line. He says, be on your guard not to be led into the error of the unprincipled, and to fall from your own stability, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In your time here, you learned a lot that will help you give to Caesar. You learned a lot that will help you lead um, fulfilling lives in this world and contribute to the good of our society. But the thing that makes Becca different is that you also learn how to give to God what belongs to God. And you learn that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And that the church is his family. It's the family to which you belong as God's beloved son or daughter. And that identity comes before anything else. So don't forget that as you go out into the wider world. Don't let Caesar overstep his bounds and become a dictator over your life. It's worth noting that 
the Roman Empire is long gone. And there will come a time when the society that you and I belong to right now will no longer be. The only community that lasts unto eternity is the family of God himself, the family to which you and I belong. Speaking for um, all of your teachers and Mrs. Minofa and administrators and staff and your fellow students, congratulations. We are proud of you um, and, and we'll miss you. It's tomorrow night at graduation. That is the last time that all of us here will be together, ever. Until we're reunited someday in our Father's house. And that reunion depends heavily on how you live Jesus' teaching. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. And that's a heavy responsibility. But know that you can always count on our love and prayers to help guide you back home. with trust in God's love and care for us. Let us bring our petitions before him. My response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church throughout the world will always give a clear witness to Jesus Christ, leading people on the path of salvation. Let us praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil leaders will always act according to truth and goodness to help bring about justice and peace, especially for those suffering and those most vulnerable, including the poor, the unborn, and the elderly. Let us praise the Lord. For a greater openness to religious vocations, that more people will hear God's call to service as priests, deacons, and a consecrated religious life. Let us praise the Lord. That all those who serve in the military will be protected from harm as they work for peace and security, and always return home safely. Let us praise the Lord. For the class of 2018, that God will guide and protect each graduate, and that they will know the joy and fulfillment of a life lived in response to God's will. Let us praise the Lord. For the poor, the sick, the suffering, for our own personal needs and prayer intentions, and for the deceased, especially those we have known, let us praise the Lord. Father, we ask that you hear these and all of our prayers and respond to them according to your will. We ask this through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <laughs> Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Boniface, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Boniface, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you personally for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, to make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
in this January of As we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us as a sign of faith and rest in this place of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all these days of Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Bless also your servants, who is our sisters, humble in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcolina, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And we ask that you keep you in their company, not swaying our merit, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all for each other. Sign peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I thank God for you.
Let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which blessed Boniface never ceased to labor, and for which he spent his whole life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the top academic scholars for the class of 2018. These 10 students achieved the highest GPA for the graduating class. They will now receive a medal to proudly wear with their cap and gown tomorrow at graduation. They are in alphabetical order. Julia Rose Arlino. Antonio Emilio Diaz. <laughs> Molly Rose Eric. <laughs> Bibi and Hum. Kayla Marie McMenamin. <laughs> Natasha Ava Minor. <laughs> Alexa Panuccio. S. Spur. <laughs> Andrew Joseph Thomas. <laughs> Richard Douglas Turnbach. Ladies and gentlemen, have a one more big round of applause for us. One of the most um, important dimensions of life at Bethlehem Catholic is service. And a lot of schools um, require service hours to help students become well-rounded people who contribute to society. But as a Catholic school, we want students to understand that service is part of being a follower of Jesus. Um, love of neighbor is simply part of being a follower of Jesus. So service is it's not just something we do, and it's not just another requirement, but service is who we are. It becomes a lifestyle for us. The Magis Award recognizes students who have gone well above and beyond the minimum amount of service work we ask of them. And the Magis Award recognizes students who have done service work, not just in one or two areas where uh, they might enjoy it and they're most comfortable, but in a whole variety of areas. Service to the Bethlehem Catholic School community. 
um, service to the larger community around us, whether it's to organizations or individuals, service to the church, to their own parish or another parish or the diocese, and service in the area of health care, whether it's visiting nursing home residents or uh, do hospital volunteer work. A lot of students have gone on service trips sometime in their high school years. Um, many students have willingly stepped outside their comfort zone to try uh, new service activities. Um, and, and a lot of them um, simply do these activities without worrying about how many hours they're putting in. There are 16 graduates who we recognize with the Magis Award, but before I name them, I just want to point out that for every one of them, there are many more members of this class who may not have met the exact criteria for Magis, but have certainly gone well above and beyond the minimum in one or more areas of service, and they, they certainly exemplify everything that I just described. So we congratulate this entire class for their example of service. For Imagine's recipients, as a remembrance of this, I have a, a medal of Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta, um, and I've already blessed these medals. Um, now, wonderful as you all are, I'm, I'm not exactly putting your service work on the same level as Mother Teresa, <laughs> but I direct your attention to the quotation from Mother Teresa on the back of the medal that you will receive. Um, she says, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. And that describes the disciple of Jesus, and that's really what we recognize in you. So if you kindly of come forward, and I'm going to call all the names at once, if you just hold your congratulations till the end. Daniela May Babylonia, Victoria Benzinger, Anderson Bento, Olivia Borges, Nicholas Senek, Justine Curcio, Jason Kenya, Scott Luna, Marissa Linsky, John Lacasio, Kayla McBandon, Natasha Minor, Morgan Orlowski, Julia Sleds, Gabrielle Suarez, and Andrew Thomas. Established in 1995 and is presented annually to a person or persons who have given at least 10 years of dedicated service to the Bethlehem Catholic community. Recipients of this award are those who live their lives in a manner that exemplifies Christian values, dedication, loyalty, and service to Bethlehem Catholic. This evening, I am proud to announce that Bethlehem Catholic has chosen Maureen Thorley for this meaningful award. Maureen is a 1974 graduate of Becca High and has been a teacher in the diocese for over 30 years. She currently teaches math at Notre Dame of Bethlehem. According to her son Paul, a 2012 graduate of Becca High and current chemistry teacher here. She is the kind of woman who always gives of herself fully to other people. She finds her pleasure in assisting others to succeed. This is evident in how she has tutored hundreds, hundreds of students over the years in math and chemistry throughout the Becca High community at all hours of the day and night, never expecting anything in return. Her generous spirit is also evident in her other children. 
all Bethlehem Catholic graduates. Michael, class of 2007, is a project engineer for Intertech in New York, Pennsylvania. Alyssa is a 2009 graduate and is now known as Sister John Paul with the Sisters of Christian Charity. She's a calculus and geometry teacher at Morris Catholic High School in New Jersey. Maureen's youngest daughter, Lauren, from the class of 2010, is also a teacher at Notre Dame Elementary, teaching fourth grade. Maureen's giving spirit has been witnessed by those around her who have been the recipients of many cakes and cupcakes she has made to celebrate retreats, weddings, birthdays, or graduations. It is in this spirit of giving that Maureen has also stepped up to run the parish soup suppers at Notre Dame Parish. Mrs. Kathy Maziar, the principal of Notre Dame Elementary, has said that Maureen has the most gracious heart and never expects anything in return. Maureen thoroughly, tr truly demonstrates charity and kindness in her daily life. Her generosity has helped so many students. Paul said that she isn't the kind of woman who searches for the value of people through material goods or money, but instead she searches for the good inside them and helps them to let it shine. It is Maureen's dedication to and passion for helping all students in the Bethlehem Catholic community and elsewhere that we are proud to present her with the Fetus et Ciencia Award. Your talent. 
And if you truly wish to multiply that gift, give it away. Share it freely with anyone who is willing to accept it. I believe that's what we're meant to do. And I guarantee by doing it, you will find great joy. Thank you very much. Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 